Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to build some kind of either a forum, instant messaging application, or website or anything like that, stay tuned. I'm going to cover how to do that without any coding knowledge in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Okay, so jumping straight in, I'll do a demo shortly, but I want to walk through a couple of ideas because this is a very simple application, but you have a ton of room to improve this. So for example, if you wanted to build out a very complex forum website, you could set this up so that this, instead of saying Instant Messenger is the name of a forum, you could have a more complex or more visually appealing interface. And then you could have all of the forum posts down here. So imagine a website with 20 pages just like this, but each one having different styles, colors, elements, etc. So the idea is this could be a simple instant messenger and only you have the file and wh whoever you give it to, or you can host it online. So I'm going to walk through a couple of use cases a little bit later in the video, but let's just do a quick demo. So you'll see right here I have Tyler Talks typed out and we'll type in one, two, three. And when we click send, you'll see that that message appears here. So these messages are in order with the newest on the top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and close out of this because it's in an incognito window and we are going to open up chat GPT, which is why we don't need to know code for this video. I will be providing the source code over at the coded apps section of codelessfix.com. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk through how to build this together. Now, if you're interested in hosting it online, you can use something like this, which is Hostinger. And there are many other options for website providers. But if you want a URL and to host it online, then you basically sign up for an account and you'll have the ability to access what looks like a file explorer. And we're really just creating these two files here. And you will need a free Firebase account as well. So first things first, we're going to go over to ChatGPT, and I always like to start by refreshing the page, especially if you've been moving between multiple windows or if you've left it for a while. So we're going to say, please write me HTML code for, an, for a website that acts as an instant messenger application using Firebase. So the cool part about this is by specifying using Firebase, instead of it just providing you with a sample that doesn't actually work, we're specifying a database. So we're saying, hey, basically give me something that's fully functional. It'll actually write out exactly where you need to type in what Firebase details to make it easier. So where we have this started, now we need to say this application needs to have a clean and intuitive user interface. And then we need to say users need to be able to type their name and a message. The messages need to appear with the newest messages on top. The box that contains the messages needs to be at the bottom of the page. So the reason I'm specifying this, we'll break this down because I, I was using this a little bit before this video. So we're saying write me code for a website that acts as an instant messenger application just because ChatGPT will know what that means. We specify using Firebase so that we're getting a functional app instead of kind of like a prototype that doesn't have a connection to a database. We specify clean and intuitive user interface. That way we're not just getting a page with some text. And then we're going to say users need to be able to type their name because if we don't do that, then it's really just going to provide a box that allows us to send a sample message and you don't really know who sent what. Now, I want the messages to appear with the newest on top because I don't want people to be endlessly scrolling. And because often with ChatGPT, it puts a box, it puts the message portion at the bottom, like for example, here, and the messages would appear here. But as this window up here expands, it pushes the text box down. So let's see what happens when we get this going. Now, if it's anything like the application that I already have, it was originally using JavaScript. So this one looks like it doesn't actually require JavaScript as a separate file. 
So you'll see here we have index and JavaScript, but this one is just giving us HTML code. So we're gonna copy the code and I want to see if it's going to actually, so it does have a spot here for our Firebase configuration. And so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna open up Notepad++, although you can use Notepad if you're interested or any other IDE for this. We'll close out our current files and paste in this text. So the first thing that we really need to do is get this section here set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our windows side by side and you can go to Firebase. So usually you could just go to firebase.google.com, sign up for a free account. Um, and then at this point, what we're going to do is you'll log into a dashboard like this. You do need to set up your project name, but then once you've actually logged in, you're going to firstly make sure that your real-time database is set up. So you'll, collect, you'll basically click real-time database and click create. And this is primarily because you need to actually, this is where the data is going to be stored. And you'll see we have sample rules. Now with this application, a couple of things to note. This is designed to be for educational purposes only. So firstly, make sure that you're making these applications in accordance with any and all applicable laws, rules, guidelines, etc. Also make sure that you're managing user data in whatever way it is that you should be managing it. And lastly, I do not recommend using these rules, but I'm not covering security in this video, but I'm setting it to be an open database. That way users can just post to it and I don't have to worry about any issues. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna go back to the data section of real-time database. Uh, so first we're gonna to go to project overview, project settings, and then we can scroll down and we're gonna click this option here, which is the make a web app option. So we'll just call this test and click register app, but you can call yours whatever you want and set up your Firebase hosting. And now all the data that we need for right here is on the left-hand side. So we're literally just gonna go and copy paste from left to right where API key goes in double quotes the auth domain. Again, you don't copy the quotes over, you just copy the content in between. And then the database URL, and you'll repeat this process. Now, one thing to note here, so it doesn't look like we actually need the database URL, so now we'll skip that. Uh, but one thing to note is if all of this information is publicly available and you don't have any rules set up, then people can just start uh, sending over whatever information that they want. And again, you won't really have a way to moderate this kind of stuff. So I would highly recommend that you focus on trying to manage that to the best of your ability. All right, so we have message sender ID. We're gonna paste that and then app ID here. All right, so now we'll paste this in. We will click file save as typically you would save this if you want it as a website as index.html or if you want it to be a different page in your website it would be whatever that page name is .html in this case i'm just going to call it test.html we will save it on the desktop and we will double click to open so you'll see it'll appear right here so we have a much less clean user interface but we'll just say test type in your message testing and click send. So at this point, you'll see nothing happened. So what we can do here to troubleshoot is right click and click inspect. So when we do this, when we go over to the console, you'll see we get these notes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see how much chat GPT can handle at once. So we're gonna copy all of the errors and paste them in and you'll see that the Firebase SDKs are not properly loaded. Make sure to include the URLs. Now, as you're building this, if Firebase gives you a JavaScript file based on your requirements, it'll tell you what you need to call them, typically just above the file. So it'll usually say index.html, main.js, etc. So in, at this point here, if you're going to copy and paste over top, remember to save yourself this portion in your current code. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to copy code. You can minimize this 
and then I'm going to go below my existing code and paste it in. Then I'm going to go up here and find the portion that we were just filling in with all of our Firebase details. So in initialize Firebase, you'll see we have this information. So we're going to scroll down and find the exact same thing. And you also want to make sure that there's no new information. So you, you basically just want to make sure we have the exact same thing. So for example, we have storage bucket here, message sender ID, same here. So we will just paste this in here. And you'll see it basically just pasted it in the values that we needed. And then we delete all of the old script. And we can go to File, Save. Now, when we open up our Instant Messenger again, we can close this console window and click Refresh. And then we'll type in some random letters and click Send. So you'll see nothing is happening, so we're going to right-click and click Inspect. And you'll see we have nothing in the Network tab. And in the Console tab, we still have what look to be either the same errors or some new ones. So we'll paste this in. And sometimes it may be easier for you to go error by error, <clears throat> but this is basically how I worked through this the first time around and was able to get it resolved after asking a few questions. So we're gonna repeat the process. We're gonna copy this code, go to our desktop. We have our test here. So we can just kind of expand this and do exactly what we did last time. Paste in the new code here find the section that has all of our Firebase details up here, and then scroll down to the Firebase details section and literally just paste over top. Then we will delete all of the previous code, save it, go back over to our website, refresh the page, and you'll see that we're actually still getting this error, well, we're still getting the errors in the console just by loading the page. So you'll see that now we're getting a new error related to the style CSS file. And I'm not actually seeing a style CSS file being provided here. So we are going to paste all of this and drop it into ChatGPT. And you'll see it appears there might be an issue with the file path for the CSS file and the, or for the CSS file and the Firebase SDK. Please make sure CSS file is located in the correct directory. And then here's an updated version of the code that includes a basic CSS style for the message box. So you'll see we have this whole message. So we're just going to do the exact same thing. And this time around, we should have cleared the majority of the errors. It, I don't think that Firebase uh, is going to be incredibly difficult to get set up, but one thing to note when you're providing a ton of error messages to ChatGPT, it can be a little bit difficult to manage all of them at the same time. So what we're just going to do is we'll paste in our content like we were doing previously, delete all of the previous content, save this jump back into our instant messaging application and you'll see now we are missing the CSS error, but we still have Firebase is not defined and uncaught syntax. So we can paste all of these, go back over here and paste them in as we are now making a little bit of progress. And you're saying the issues related to the version of the Firebase SDK, which is what I had earlier. So this is going to provide a uh, syntax for that. Uh, so you'll see earlier was written in ES6 and requires modular bundler. So we're going to wait for this to finish. And this should clear up a couple more errors. I think we'll only have to do this one more time. And if this doesn't fix it, and we should have fully functional code. Now, one thing to note, you see that I keep running this from my desktop. That's what I meant at the beginning of the video when I was talking about different use cases. If you don't want to host this online, then since you literally just have a single application, so for example, uh, we've saved it, this file right here, you can just pass this to whoever because it has all the Firebase details saved. So whoever uses it will have 
access to this application and it doesn't have to be hosted online. All right, perfect. So it looks like we have the page loading. Doesn't look like it's the most appealing, but we will try to type in some information and see what happens. So it looks like it's working. So we'll type in some new letters. What I want is the newest to be on top always. And it looks like that's the case. Now, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to type in some random letters because this is what I was referring to uh, with the text boxes being down here. You don't want to have the information set up to where when you hit this bottom of the box, it starts pushing the messages down. So you'll see it's giving us this scroll window, which is what we wanted. And the newest is on top, but you can get it to specify that the newest need to be on the bottom as well. So uh, this is a pretty basic application. I'm not a huge fan of the overall appearance. So the code that I'm going to be providing over at codelessfix.com is going to be for these two files, which again, when you open it, it just has a much cleaner interface in my opinion. And the code is not going to have the details to my Firebase account. It'll just have, you know, insert your details here. So now it's time to go over those use cases really quickly. So I have closed these two applications and I am in my file browser for codelessfix.app. These two files, index.html and main.js, are the two files that allow this to function. So basically, just like at the beginning of the video, we were opening up index.html, and you'll see all the code here. When you access codelessfix.app, or at least when I'm doing that now, I've re I'll be removing it after this video, but it's accessing this file, which references this file and all of the Firebase details. So you, as long as you have these two files together, whether it's on a local machine or on a website, it will function without any issues. It's the same situation, so you can host this locally. So you could put these two in a zip folder and pass them out to a friend, and then only you two will have that custom, um, basically just application that you can use for the just instant messaging portion. Now, if you wanna look at the user data section, you can go to your real-time database and then you'll see security rules are defined as public, but basically as you're kind of scrolling through, you can check all of the details that you need to regarding your usage here, your backups, your rules, data, etc. So again, the way that it's set up, um, you'll be able to make sure that all of your messages, you should be able to access them. If you have questions on finding them, you can go here and say, where are the messages located? in Firebase. And you'll see it put it in a Firebase collection. Now, the previous app I built was in the messages section of Firebase. So what we're going to have to do is go to the Fire Store database. We'll go to the collection and you'll see we have messages here and we have a collection with a bunch of messages that we were just sending. So it could set it up when you're using ChatGPT to store it in Firestore database, which is right here, or in the real-time database. It really just depends on how you have this set up. The one I'm providing is going to be in the real-time database, but again, you can see we have the real-time database, Firestore database. There's tons of different options, so it's entirely up to you. You just need to make sure that you clicked on whichever one it's going to be using, and you've clicked start or set up. But I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I will see you all in the next video.